Okay, so we're going to go over the uh, the controls, the user controls on a PBS 14 device. Uh, this is these are both relatively typical. I'm going to remove the swing arm adapter in order to uh, show a better look at this. Now, there's an optical illusion here about one of these being larger than the other, and it's mainly just with the um, that lens and lens cap arrangement. These are actually the same same size housing. It's just one of them looks a little larger because of the uh, because of the, this rear assembly on here. The uh, the controls though, um, this one right here I think does run a well. Yeah, it's a little bit longer I guess just because of the way the lenses are are put together. Um, this one I think is a little bit more advanced model. It's an Opmon or something they call it. But anyway, your switch is going to work about the same on any of these, and uh, it's dark enough out. I think that you know we're safe to turn this on here. We're going to uh, I'm going to turn this on, and as you can probably see through the camera, this one you can still keep an image even though it's not looking straight through. But um, so that's off. And then we've got on, you'll probably see it light up green through the camera. And then here, you're not going to see much of a difference if we pull it out. We turn it one more notch, and that's with the infrared illumination on. It probably doesn't look all that different through anything, but at night, with no other light, what's happened with the infrared illumination is that one of these little things is actually lighting up as a small LED light. And it lights the area immediately in front of the device. And if it's really dark out, it's it's lighting us up, you know, reasonably well for use with night vision equipment. The thing is, it's going to signal other night vision users about where where you're located because this this will become a light. It's not visible through the camera and a naked eye, but it's 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 actually engaged. So um, if this was on the swing on mark mount and then there's a, you know these little electrical connectors and this was on here and it snapped on and off it would reset the unit which means it would turn it off and we have to we have to just turn it all the way off leave it off or you know just just basically enough to get it reset and then we can turn it back on again um, that's why on a switch it gets a little confusing but basically Counterclockwise is off, clockwise is on, pulled out clockwise gets us that little infrared illumination. There is a front focus, which usually is for your distance focus, okay? And then there's a rear focus, which usually is your ocular adjustment for the individual users. So if you're an eyeglass user, you're going to need to play with the rear a little bit more, but this will automatically adjust. If you wear eyeglasses or don't wear eyeglasses, you, you can deal with all that with the adjustments on one of these things. Uh, again, an eyeglass user might do a little better than this model with this model than this one, but they, they both have the same types of adjustments. The battery compartments are um, going to vary a little bit depending on where you got the device. This particular one uses a single battery. It's got a little tether here to hold our, our lens cap on to the battery compartment. There's no other string and lanyard involved. If you do install another string and lanyard, it goes through these little holes. It's a pretty, it's a metal uh, cap. It's, it's tight, it's knurled on. Um, again, nothing here it should require any tools. It uses a single AA battery. Pretty heavy duty. It's got some rubber seals in there. If, if it gets wet, it's not the end of the world. If you go scuba diving with it, you could have problems. But, but you know, a little water isn't going to kill it. You just don't want to wash these things with soap and water. Uh, you, you don't want to put it in a situation where water might migrate inside of something somehow. All of these things are going to have a brightness gain uh, control of one kind or another. It's usually a knob at the front. A little bit newer model. It's got a little bit larger knob. Uh, they all do the same thing, okay? And basically, they're all the same thing where, where you see these little things are screwed together. They're all basically the same thing with the, with the different battery housing. So you got user adjustments here, 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 and then a brightness adjustment here, and of course your battery cap. Now, on slightly older models, but these are still in production, okay? 
What we've got is the front adjustment, the rear adjustment, which are, are just like any of them. And then uh, the switch works exactly the same way. I think I took the batteries out of this one, so that's not going to turn on. The switch works exactly the same way, the on and off, and then we can pull it out to rotate it all the way on. Um, and yeah, clockwise puts us all the way on. And then uh, we've got it. We've got a knob up here. Now this one has a little string tether thing working with this cap. Okay, it has to keep you from losing these caps, but you end up with this little problem with it. It starts to get in the way of the other stuff. So it gets in the way of this knob. It gets in the way of this. That's because these models are basically. Uh, a little bit modified from the 6015 which came out before the PVS 14 not by long but by enough that the this brightness thing was an added feature it wasn't originally part of the design and then they added it and had to figure out where to put the knob so that's one of the reasons this thing gets a little tricky the other thing is these battery compartment doors a little bit over engineered it's a it's a pinch in arrangement okay and then you put the batteries on here and you'll notice that it's a little bit confusing because it's the same basic stuff on either side of where your positive and negative go. Well, there's a little dimple here. This little tit tells us that this battery goes in dimple up. This battery, because there's no little tit, goes in dimple down. And then when we put this in the device, we, we have a little curvature on this thing. Well, the curvature let's just say roughly matches the curvature of the lens so the little concave area goes toward the lens a little convex area goes away from the lens and then you got to make sure not to get the little string stuffed into that hole when you're doing this so it's, it gets a little tricky to to change the batteries on one of these at night in the rain in the dark under stress um, but that's basically your user controls the brightness gain it's a little knob there's no notches or clicks on this knob. If you're getting notches or clicks, it's because your battery compartment door isn't on right or the string's caught in there or something like that. You got your on off and power switch, which again may reset if you've had this on and off the, um, the swing arm mount or taking it on and off the head mount. You may have to turn it off and then on again to get it to work. That's entirely normal. The other thing is if this thing got, had the lens cap off and was hit by particularly bright light, you may have to turn it on and off again because that was part of the safety cutout. We've got the rear focus here. Notice that the position on this does not change when we adjust this. Okay, but if you swing this around on the other side of the swing arm mount, you got to kind of rotate that little eye cup and, and get that to go in whatever position you're going to have it in. But that's basically your controls that are on the device. On and off switch, brightness switch, front focus, rear focus, battery compartment door. There shouldn't be any other switches, buttons, or levers that you really need to worry about on that. Our next little video is going to cover the weapon mount.